Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Pillars of Eternity 2. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you're supposed to join me today. I thought I picked this up last episode. We're getting um, reptilianized. These are good for for, cra for, uh, for crafting, not crafting, for enchanting our weapons. And we are in the Guild Ruins. I just now realized that it's called Guild Ruins. No! No! We're in the Guild of the Water Shapers. Why is it ruins? Was it not like this? Did they get, I mean, uh, yes, they all died, except for oh, Guildmaster. On all snakes. Was there snakes around? Oh, right, the Naga. I forgot about that. They call them snakes. Uh, and uh, the Guildmaster Might War is down here. And there's a trap. Ah, we shall take care of that. So, yeah, the Naga attacked the Guildmasters here, which comes on the heels of them attacking the port of... Uh, uh, I don't remember the, the name of the port, but the... Well, she killed them all, didn't she? Let's have a chat with her. The guildmaster lifts her gaze to meet yours, her eyes struggling to focus. She's been slashed and stabbed numerous times, and her robes are soaked red with blood. Lyru! Oh, gods, look what they've done to you! Takeo covers his mouth with both hands as he surveys her injuries. Peace, Takeo. I gave back ten times what I took. Too many... Even for me. She sputters on a, on a mouthful of blood, but still manages to... Uh, a red-rimmed smile. Uh, yeah, Onakasa sent me to find you, but I think you need a healer first. No time for that, I say. She waves you off, grimacing. You are too stubborn to die, old shark. For once, Takehu, just listen. <coughs> the rod of the deep. Oh, I've lost it. Taken. You'll need to <coughs> find the rod. Get through the stone door by the entrance. Stop Stop exerting yourself or you'll bleed out. Oh, don't you think I know how much water I've lost? Wards failing. Hurry before it escapes. You're already gone. Find peace in the beyond. Oh, pitied Isngati, Lady of Lament. As the pearl orb of the, of the, of the heavens. Uh. She wheezes as she struggles to get the words out. It doesn't sound like she's even addressing you any longer. The guildmaster's eyes glaze over and she falls silent. Myru? Myru? Takeo takes her by the shoulder and shakes gently at first and then harder. At last he stops, pulling away and bringing his hand up to clutch his brow. By Ngati, she's dead. Strange last words. Pitied is Ngati, Lady of Torment. Goddess of the Oceans, that's the same one. Trickster Goddess with a... Lady of Torment? Wait a minute, that's not... Sorry, not Lady of Torment. Lady of Lament, yeah, that makes sense. I was like, what? Why, why Lady of Torment? Uh, although the Trickster would sort of, yeah, uh, would sort of mix that a little bit. Uh, as the Pearl Orb of the Heavens. Yeah, because she's the Lady of the Moon as well. That has to do. And I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna say strange last words. Let's go. There's nothing we can do for the her. Kara. The others will see to her once we've cleaned up the last of this mess. He regards Myro's corpse one last time before turning away. Oh, I, wait, 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 wait! I need to talk to your spirit. Oh, hi. The wheel, how it tugs at me, Akira, and how bright you look. Myra's attention snaps towards a distant speck of light, but she shakes it off to remain in the moment. At least in death, I can complete a thought. She grimaces down at her swiftly diminishing body. My rod and the words of Pariki's devotion will open the way to the inner sanctum, past the sealed door. She closes her eyes and concentrates. Pity Dizengati, Lady of Lament. As the pearl orb of the heavens crosses her view, her eyes well with tears, as constant as rain. But the moon's skyward journey continues apace, the lover's affection as ephemeral as fingers touching. Myru opens her eyes again. She nods as she, uh, as her form grows indistinct. You must strengthen the wards, no matter what it tells you. What's that supposed to mean? What he tells you. 
Her mouth moves again, emitting no sound. As she fades from sight, she raises her hand to point toward the entrance of the sanctum. She reaches to touch Takeo's cheek, but of course her hand drifts through his skin. He shivers, touched by a passing breeze. Which he can't see her, so yeah, because he's not a watcher. Um, this is a this is just a song, it's just a prayer or whatever. Pitied is in Gati, Lady of Lament. Uh, as the pearl orb of the heavens crosses her view, her eyes well with tears as constant as rain, but the moon's skyward journey continues apace. Was um, yeah, she fell in love with the moon. One of the moons that fell. There's three. There were three moons, and one of them fell. No, or was it? I'm not really sure. There, there's, there's also the, the astronomy in this game is, is, is detailed, but I'm not really sure about the details. It doesn't really play an immense amount of. Um, there's no real uh, result in the in the storylines for mm, exceptional scale of armor. Not very good. Uh, I need uniques. There, it doesn't really play a role in the in the lore or in the plot, I should say, but it does play a role in the lore, and the themes are all there all, all the time, especially with the uh, Ondra and the Moon. Uh, and it's what I was saying last episode about the the Ondra um, Steers song. It is it's really cool. I really like it. This statue depicts an Almawa woman, her hand extended and grasping at the air. An eroded plaque sits by her feet. Something about the statue calls out to you, the echo of a fractured soul that tarried in this place for long and thoughtful years. You feel victory tinged by grief and regret. So, victory tinged by grief and regret. I'm going to read the plaque first. The words are much eroded and water damaged, but a few choice snippets of phrases stand out with clarity. Periki... Lore and Hunter crossed the strength of and back again. N numbered for, maybe? Cunning deal. Lafus. Maybe her rest, guilty soul, I assume. And freedom, maybe? May her rest. May her death give rest to her guilty soul. Something. I, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. It's obviously not written in English, so it's not like I can, uh, I can judge, or it, it, it I wouldn't be able to judge anyway, because the, the dots there, uh, just denote missing text and not necessarily the length of things, because you can't fit words in there, obviously. But anyway. Oh, but we are gonna be able to. Yeah, closer scrutiny reveals that the inscription was perf purposely purposefully marred, an act of sabotage done perhaps years ago by the toughness. Sorry, by the thoroughness, you suspect Kith hands. This is the tomb of Periki. Such disrepair, I say. Huh. Kith broke Periki. Is that a, a decapitated Naga? You'd, you'd expect it to be Naga the, that broke that. Although it maybe was done to prevent... Eh, well, I guess they would see a statue of a person holding a... Uh, Naga decapitated? A kith, I should say. Uh, I'm gonna break that statue, because it's just... It's rude. Uh, and just... The heck, yeah. Uh, interesting that it's all... Why is it black? Oh, okay. Um, let's see. The Tomb of Periki. Periki was an explorer and founder of the Water Shapers Guild. Many of the modern teachings of water shaping stem from her research into ancient Huana society, which led her posthumous... Po post... Po post-death renown and the uh, subsequent naming of her home dis district in Nekataka as Periki's Outlook. That's the first time we see that. Which is cool. Um, I'm gonna inspect... First, just inspect the lingering soul. There's a soul in here. Your vision bobs with the motion of the sea. You stand aboard the deck of swift winds, where your mates share bemused self-congratulatory glances at, as they work. One of them claps your back with approval. You step back and aim a reproachful look at your mate, however friendly his intent. You know there will be time for reprieve when you are squared away in Nekataka. Something cuts through the water to your, sport, to your port side, an enormous shape just beneath the waves. Someone shouts that the winds have turned in your favor at last. This is followed by an enthusiastic cheer among the crew. You don't share their mirth. Eyes to the horizon, I say. 
said Pariki, I assume, because this is probably the tomb and that's why there's a soul here. You bring home a mighty gift, though it takes an unusual form, one that you pray to Ngati you are able to keep in check. The vision dissipates and your land legs reassert themselves. My land legs? Wait a minute. What? What do you mean, my land legs? Was Pariki not... Not... not, not land legged? What? I'm gonna hold her hand, because maybe that works. You grasp her hand with tenderness. At first, nothing happens, but then a tiny droplet of water forms at the corner of her eye and rolls down her cheek, dripping on the floor. Wipe away the tear! I thought it was gonna be like a, a secret passage, but no. It's apparently, it's just the statue that is literally crying as a person does. A human does, anyway. You reach out and draw your... Well, some, some people can't cry, because th that's a that's a thing that that is can be genetically uh, not available. It's not even like a... You know, you just burned somehow with a disease or something, burned your, your cry thing, well, cry nodules, whatever they, they're called. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, some people don't have that. It's like people who can't... Uh, uh, what's that? Oh, well, the one with the tongue. Uh, with the tongue. There's a thing with the tongue. Like ten percent of people can't. Um, or is it only ten percent that can? Like roll the tongue in a tube. I can do that. Only the the tube in a U shape, but not this shape. My my um, my, my dad can uh, can actually um, do it both ways. But anyway, and my mom even could even do that. And that's why I know this stuff because. I was, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, look at this, that doing my tongue, and my dad was like, ah, that's nothing, and I'm like, oh, no, I can't do that, and that's that's how I know. And there's also another thing, which is the, uh, uh right, there's a, there's a, uh, some people don't have it, but neither, I don't know why I'm talking about this, it's the statue that's crying, I ramble about all the things, you know this, uh, but beneath your tongue, you can have, most people do have that, but there's like, if you look, if you look at a mouth, an open mouth like this, and if you put your, put your tongue to your uh, to the, the ceiling of your mouth, beneath the tongue, most people have like a little a little bit of flap of skin that connects the their tongue to the bottom of their mouth. Some people don't have that genetically. It's kind of funny to think about it because I have that, and it's like you can put your finger in there and be like, "Oh, look at this thing over here. What's, what's that all about?" And uh, yeah, most people do. Yeah. Anyway, for a moment, the stone feels soft. Uh, oh, wait. You reach out and draw your thumb down the statue's cheek, wiping away the trail of moisture. For a moment, the stone feels soft to the touch. Aw. Was it hard to the... What do you mean soft? Harsh or hard? What, what was that supposed to be? I don't know what that was supposed to be. I thought it was a secret passage. Like, uh, you... you I don't know. Maybe it was a secret passage. So we got Naga Warriors. More Naga Warriors. I'm just worried for Shodi. Definitely gonna need to sleep. Oh, who swift, swift, swift. Now we should be fine. Let's bring the KO up. Hi, hello everybody. How is it going? I have the power of the sea. Hopefully. Uh, let's bring uh, Penumbra up in here and get a dragon up in there because why not? And that's the fight. Oh no, this is all terrible. What the heck? Oh no, that's yeah right. Uh, that's. Let's see what I can do here. Okay, he's taking shots. This guy's gonna be a bit of a problem. We got a dragon up in here. Let's uh, do a little bit of flame. Right there. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna need you to join. Eh, let's do this. Let's do that one. Don't hurt the dragon too much. Good stuff. And then I can do another one of those. For good measure, they really, really want to hurt Maya. Which makes sense, because the... Because she does so much damage. That wasn't half bad. Especially, especially because she does bleed true, true damage, which is pretty awesome. It's sort of, it's very interesting. I think it's one of the biggest failings of uh, the combat. Well, it's, it's not one of the biggest failings. I'm fine with it. that sort of combat. Uh, I'm. Let me start again. I think it, it is a big failing of the combat in. Um, Pathfinder Kingmaker, and retroactively in Icewind no Dale, in Baldur's Gate, and uh, any Infinity, Infinity Engine game, really, uh, that the AI really, really focuses on one character. 
so for example, if you have a line of characters, like imagine you're, you're, you got five characters this way and you just advance and there's five characters over there, each one of them is going to attack whoever they see first and they don't focus on whoever, um, whoever is the most important. Uh, that doesn't happen in this game, which is great, and it didn't happen in the first game either, which was, is also great. It really makes the game a lot harder than it would be otherwise. But Pathfinder Kingmaker, being an, a new game, really, really shouldn't shouldn't have that sort of combat. I always felt, you know, I grew up playing Baldur's Gate 2 and Baldur's Gate 1, and, uh, and uh, that, though, that's basically the extent of my real time with pause games as I was growing up. Well, I say growing up, but basically from the age of 16 to 20 something. Um, but, um, and, and then I got, I think it was 2009, I got uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. Uh, and, um, and the first thing that stood out to me is just, hey, go for the mages. The strategies of positioning that you can have in that game. What did I do? Retrieve the Guildmaster Myru's rod. Right, 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 the rod. And now I need, yeah. So I didn't didn't actually pay attention to what I was picking up. Um, and in Temple of, Ele of Elemental Evil, it's just so difficult. Um, I still need to do a Let's Play of that game because it's so much fun. <laughs> uh, it's so difficult because they just geek the mage. That's what they do. And that's what you do. It is like if you're fighting against other people, that's what they do. You're not going to let the mage be buffing your team. And mages are super powerful. They're also super squishy. Tend to be, anyway. Um, and in Baldur's Gate, it's like... I, I did the Let's Play and people kept telling me, rightly so, that I should, you know, have things like armor for the mage. You know, armor is a skill, not not an, an actual... Um, not an actual... This is important. Uh, not an actual... Not actual armor, but... The, the enemies in Baldur's Gate, they just don't attack the mage. If you let your mage just be at the back, you're gonna take some damage, but it's mostly from AoEs. So, it's just, you can be fine. It's fine. Uh, especially because you have so many items that increase armor anyway, with the extra armor class. Anyway, so this is important because it's a recent history, history of Queen's Birth, and we didn't have this book in the first game. So let's see. The Valen's arrival in Ekataka was not unexpected. Our fisher folk had watched them lurk near the edges of our territory for months. Their ships, like the keen eyes of a jeweler... Oh, I pronounced that properly. I'm better. Inspecting us, already counting the coin they'd make on a prize so fine as the, the a dead fire. They were not the first to watch us so. Doubtless, they will not be the last. We were not certain what it was they wanted at first, aside from whatever it was we had. When Onikaza sent an envoy of Mataro, that's Onikaza. Maybe the first one, I would assume, not because otherwise the timeline is just so rushed. Because um, she's pretty young, Onikaza the second, isn't she? I don't know. Uh, it's, they look young. Uh, when Onikaza sent an envoy of Mataro to speak with... Uh, with them, with the them, they made noise about desiring trade and cultural exchange. What exactly it was they intended to trade, or what manner of cultural exchange they thought might entice us, wasn't entirely clear. We were not naive, with a umlada over there. Is that how it's written? We knew their arrival spelled change for the dead fire as surely as we know that rain falls in the monsoon season. The trouble came in how we would manage the villains' as influence, how we would contain it. Better they think as pa partners than easy marks. The thinking at the palace went at the time. We could not risk war with them, as fractured as people as a people as we are, and have any hope of winning it, no matter the power of our water shapers. As the leader of the Kahanga, Onakasa decided for us. She allowed the Valians to set down roots in the Queen's birth and begin limited mining operations in the archipelago. She su suggested this might ease trade and tensions between our people and theirs, but in truth, I believe she only wanted to keep an eye on them. I sympathize with her point of view, but I cannot endorse it, because Onekaza forgot the truth of roots, that they are the silent, grasping hands of trees, and that a tree once established cannot be moved without destroying the ground around it. But it was done. The Valians quickly made themselves at home, and the ensuing conflict over who had right, uh, rights to which lands, or to which islands, which ad adravanes, which trading routes only served to fracture the Hoana further. Then the Rawatayans arrived. By that point it was too late. The colonials were in the dead fire to stay. Now Hoana refugees flood into Nekataka from across the archipelago, complaining of lost land and dwindling resources, and the trading companies fight a quieter war against each other with our doorsteps at the front. 
Ngati guide us in this trying time. And uh, when was that? A recent history. So it's it's pretty recent. Recent. So the status quo, it's very much as we are observing it. That's that's what it, the thing that the status quo. The, what is being descri described in the book is very much what too we tall. were observing. Who said too tall? Said something about too tall. I'm not really sure what it means. And I think that's what. Uh, now that I look back around and see the statue, I think we need to sink to the statue with a rod or something. Or maybe the statue cr literally cried as a person does because I don't have my rod. Let's see what we have over here. The tunnel descends sharply into the murky waters. There's no telling just how far into the mountain it goes. Hmm. Well, let's leave. Then, either through here or through there, because there's no other way if we can't go into the mountain. That's basically the same. Curious. Huh. Do I need to use the rod somehow? That's a different thing. That's the rod of the deep. This unassuming length of driftwood hums with power and waves of energy. Uh, power and waves of energy. Se oh, right. And waves of energy seem to break against its surface with the relentless pressure of the tides. The copper is well preserved despite its age, and it pulls with an invisible force like the tug of a dowsing. of a do dowsing rod. I don't know what a dowsing rod is. Or maybe I do, and I just forgot. Also, that is a passage that I didn't see. I've retrieved the rod of the Deep Hunter. According to Myro, I can open the stone door near the entrance of the Sanctum. Yep, I didn't see that door before, did I? As you approach the door, the carved stone flashes with ethereal light. You feel a faint, salty breeze gusting from an unseen source. A faded inscription is nestled among the elaborate stone carvings. I'm going to read this inscription. Huana runes decorate the stone entrance. Ngati would not have gifted her chosen people a watery covenant unless they persisted in deserving it. This sanctum is a covenant of our making. Only the sigil of the covenant and the words of my devotion will open the way. From the Pariki Master of the Guild. The original Master of the Guild. I'm going to touch the door with the rod of the Deep Hunter and I'm going to say Melon. It's doing something, but I don't think Melon worked. The door reacts at once. A stone panel shifts aside to reveal a circular dial engraved with symbols. This would appear to be a locking mechanism requiring a precise combination. Uh, really? Don't I? Can I just not sing? Uh, let's study the symbols around the dial first. Brushing aside a layer of dust reveals a circular dial of pictographs, though you could not guess their relevance or relation to each other. You recognize the symbols themselves. Funny that they say pictographs. Pictographs just means icons, but icons is a very computationally derived word, so definitely not icons. I guess it's not necessarily computationally de derived. Icon has a very different inter or name for it, or not ma name, meaning, before computers were uh, introduced, or just actually not introduced, but just general usage and knowledge in our society. Um, Pictographs is the correct term. So we have a fish. We have uh, some hens. Very pretty icons. They're really good. I like that a lot. Uh, that's that. I love that. That is just that is good. I like that a lot. That symbol over there. Uh, over here we have uh, what looks like a cloud, maybe. But I don't understand why it's like that. But I think it might be turned around, and that is a cloud that's raining. So that's rain. And this would be a tornado, maybe. So we got water, air. Water. And, and I don't know. Flesh? Uh, what's hands made out of? F meat? Flesh? Uh, maybe. Anyway. Uh, you recognize the symbols themselves. The first is a full moon. Oh, it's a moon. Right. Uh, it's light beaming down on Eora. The next is a Juana symbol of Ondra, classically depicted with a head of an anglerfish in her aspect as an gati. The next is a pair of hands reaching out for each other. Their fingertips just barely making contact. They, they're not. They're not. And the last is in uh, the last is the rain falling powerfully and inexorably. Okay. Well, we have a little bit of a puzzle here. 
let's wait until the next episode to figure it out. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Pillars of Eternity 2. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.